Hello, my friends. Thank you very much for subscribing to our channel. Why cannot we see a champion with all the games in a season ending in a draw? Today, let's continue the topic from last Thursday. We still analyze the probability of having such a champion in a league with 20 teams, a total of 38 rounds and 380 games in a season. In the last video, we estimated the probability from various perspectives. And in the last estimation, we assumed that, the probability of a team scoring m goals in a game is equal to 1 minus alpha times alpha to the mth power. The probability of not scoring any goal is therefore 1 minus alpha. The probability of a game ending in a draw is simply 1 minus alpha over 1 plus alpha. We used to give one example. When the probability of not scoring any goal is 1 third. That is, alpha is equal to 2 thirds. It will take more than 10 to the power of 265 seasons to see such a champion. However, there, we assume that all teams have the same strength and in the same shape in any game. So what if they are different? We will finish this discussion today. We assume that, in a game, the abilities of two teams to score goals are no longer described by the same the parameter alpha. But different ones, alpha 1 and alpha 2. By using the same method as before, we can calculate the probability of a game ending in a draw in this case, as 1 minus alpha 1 times 1 minus alpha 2 over 1 minus alpha 1 times alpha 2. So, is this new probability necessarily smaller than the previous probability? Obviously, no. For example, if alpha is equal to 9 over 10, the previous probability is equal to 1 over 19. And if alpha 1 and alpha 2 are equal to 1 over 10 and 2 over 10 respectively, the new probability is equal to 72 over 98, which is much larger than 1 over 19. This shows that, if the two teams' scoring abilities are relatively poor, it is more likely to lead to a draw result than the case, where the two teams are close in terms of strength and the shape in a game. All in all, this comparison doesn't make too much sense. Then how to make a meaningful comparison? Obviously, we need to use the mean value of alpha 1 and alpha 2 instead of alpha. Here comes our math today. We have several commonly used mean values, which are harmonic mean, geometric mean, arithmetic mean, and quadratic mean, also known as root mean square. Today's mathematical question is, which of the four inequalities we get, by replacing alpha with these four mean values, are correct? Why not give a try, and we will come back soon. First, the answer. All the first three inequalities are correct. And only the one with the quadratic mean is wrong. How can we prove that, the first three are correct? We know that, 1 minus alpha over 1 plus alpha, monotonically decreases with alpha. Simply because its numerator decreases with alpha, and its denominator increases with alpha. We also know that, the harmonic mean is not bigger than the geometric mean, not bigger than the arithmetic mean and not bigger than the quadratic mean. So we only need to prove that, the inequality corresponding to arithmetic mean is correct. Then the first three inequalities will be all correct. And the proof is pretty straightforward. We first revert the left side of the inequality, to the form of the square of the difference over the difference of the square. Let's take a look at the denominator first. Referring to the right side of the inequality, we replace the arithmetic mean with the geometric mean and its value will not increase. We then expand the numerator again. And again replace the arithmetic mean with the geometric mean. And its value will still not increase. And this is exactly equal to the right side of the inequality. The proof is therefore done. Regarding the reason why the inequality corresponding to the quadratic mean is not correct. The easiest way to prove it wrong, is to select some values of alpha 1 and alpha 2 to calculate, until we find a case against its conclusion, the proof is done. Meanwhile, if we want to theoretically prove that, its opposite inequality has solutions, it would be a little bit difficult for most of the students in the ninth grade. However, for the completeness of this topic, we will still show how to prove it briefly. We set alpha 2 equal to k times alpha 1, where k is bigger than 1. Then we bring it into the inequality, that is opposite to the original one, and is to be proved to have solutions. We will then get the following inequality. The part in the red square is equal to k plus 1, 
times the difference between the quadratic mean and the harmonic mean of k and 1. Since k is bigger than 1, this difference is bigger than 0. The part in the green square is equal to twice the difference between the quadratic mean and the arithmetic mean of k and 1. Again because k is bigger than 1. So this difference is bigger than 0 as well. So we get the solution for alpha 1. This ratio is bigger than 0, so this solution must have an intersection with that. Alpha 1 is bigger than 0 and smaller than 1 over k. Then, we have therefore proved that this opposite inequality must have solutions. That is, the original inequality with quadratic mean is not correct. So, how much impact will the difference in team strengths and shapes in a game have, on the probability of winning the championship with all game ending in a draw in a full season? In our previous example, if alpha is equal to two-thirds, it would take an average of more than 10 to the power of 265 seasons to see such a champion. If we slightly change the probabilities of both teams scoring a goal, to alpha 1 equals 19 over 30, and alpha 2 equals 21 over 30, so that their arithmetic mean remains two-thirds. The probability of a game ending in a draw then drops slightly to 33 over 167. The probability of having such a champion will further drop by another two orders. As of now, we have basically finished discussing the theoretical issue of the probability of winning the championship with all game ending in a draw in a full season. What hasn't been discussed is mainly about the difference between games. That is to say, we only discussed that, alpha 1 is not equal to alpha 2 in one game. But did not discuss that, both alpha 1 and alpha 2 can vary from game to game. In theory, it is really possible that, this difference cause a further drop in the probability of having such a champion. But more importantly, because of this difference, in the analysis of empirical data, we cannot use the amount of the games ending in a draw, over the total amount of games in a season, to represent the probability of any single game to end in a draw. If sometimes, people do use this ratio to represent it, we need to keep in mind that, they have already assumed, there is no difference from game to game. We actually can show a little bit the result of this kind of data analysis, from several 380 game leagues, from the most recent 2021 to 2022 season. In the Premier League, among the total 380 games, there are 88 ending in a draw. Based on this probability, it takes more than 10 to the power of 241 seasons to have such a champion. The League 1. Among the total 380 games, there are 102. It will take more than 10 to the power of 217 seasons. The La Liga. Among the total 380 games, there are 111. So it will take more than 10 to the power of 203 seasons. The Serie A. Among the total 380 games, there are 98. So it will take more than 10 to the power of 223 seasons. At the end, let's use the age of the earth to make a comparison. Now people believe the age of the earth is far younger than 10 to the 10th power years. So it is not surprising at all that we haven't seen such a champion in any big league has all of their games ending in a draw in a full season. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.